Welcome to Stranger Connections, where I celebrate wonderfully weird people and quirky stories. I'm your curious beast and host, Lisa David Olson, the practically world-famous business humorist, interactive speaker, and speaker mentor. So bring me to your event if you want to add more communication for your team, more humor, let's do a workshop, whatever you're thinking, I'm up for it. But today... We're going to chitty chat with Jordan Schrader. Am I saying Schrader right? Yes, you are. Look at me. I'm everything. All right, Jordan, I am so thrilled to have you here. What I've learned about you is that you are a speaker, an advocate, a pastor with your masters, a pastor with a master, a coach, a comic, and an award-winning filmmaker. How did I do? You nailed it. <laughs> I just think that's pretty good. You got all this stuff going on. And you also just did a TEDx in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I uh, did try out for Oshkosh, I think, three years ago. Did not get that one. I'm so glad you did. So I want people to check out Jordan Schrader's, and you're going to have to check out the spelling of his name because it's different. And his TEDx in Oshkosh was fantastic i love the bits of humor you have in there <laughs> thank you so your message one of your messages because i know you're also a coach and one of the things you talk about is how to become a hero and that it's a choice to become a hero uh -huh. so let's let's just start there let's talk about your story and and why why we can all choose to be a hero all right well um first of all thank you for just bringing me on it's a real pleasure and um I guess uh, just everything I've been through in my life, I was born with a um, neuromuscular disease called spinal muscular atrophy. I have type 1 specifically. And now in layman's terms, what this means is that it's a um, progressive, um, again, neuromuscular disease that is genetic. And that um, basically as I get older, uh, my muscles get weaker because my body doesn't have the spinal motor neuron gene that helps supplement everyone's strength in their body. That's a very oversimplified way to put it. Right. And, uh, the backup gene, SMN2, um, which is what exactly what it is, um, does not supply enough as well. So because I don't have that supplement and I don't have that um, protein, um, the natural protein to supply my muscle mass and strength and everything like that, I just gradually, gradually get weaker. And so, um, like I used to be able to swing a baseball bat, I used to be able to hold a gamepad controller or um, wiggle my arms around or roll around on the floor with my toy tractors. When I was younger and all that stuff, um, I can't do any of that anymore. I uh, just gradually kind of um, withered away. And um, But long story short, I just learned through my faith to adapt to it. And um, I've been very blessed with a wonderful family and amazing friends. I've, I've been uh, given the gift of being able to attract friends and um, be good at making friends, which is a very rare gift, especially nowadays. And um, being the youngest of three, um, with having two older, beautiful sisters, um, I'm the youngest, naturally, so... The baby. Uh, I'm, I'm the baby. I'm the creative, fun one in the family. <laughs> Although my, old, my, my sisters are very creative, too. We're, we all got the creative gene, but... We just learned through all of our trials and tribulations that we go through. Um, a lot of people say this, but it really is how you respond mm -hmm. to those trials and tribulations. And to answer your question more directly, um, why I choose to be a hero? Because uh, the way I kind of like to uh, play it for people to relate with is that everyone has an origin story and um how we respond to our shortcomings 
or our tribulations, um, or even our uh, moments of celebration. Everything in between, everything has a response, good, the good and the bad, and how you respond to it can determine, of course, who you are. It's our choices, and a lot of times what we do uh, that defines us. Um, how you do that, you can be the hero of your story, or you can be the villain. Mm. Okay, that's something I kind of struggled with, and uh, I made everyone else the villain in my story, in my shortcomings, um, when uh, I had failed relationships, or I had um, struggles with my disability, and uh, all these different things, and other traumas in my life, I would often play the victim card. Mm -hmm. Not blatantly, but I could tell that I was subtly doing so, and I was just blame my circumstances. Yeah blame other people yeah well um, I, I can see that and would you yeah. say a villain is also the victim then yeah mm. yeah you can make it out to be that yeah and so right. uh, the whole thing with the story that i tell for people from my motivational speaking is um oftentimes we're looking for wh what's uh who is oppressing me what's making me feel oppressed and uh Oftentimes, it's ourselves. And it's another way of saying that you are your own biggest enemy. Mm. And so, uh, and uh, it wasn't even my disability anymore. That was just part of it. Just my, my severe physical disability, while it is uh, daunting and uh, heavy, and it's a heavy, heavy cross to bear that wasn't the source of whatever issues I may be having. It was me. I it was what I was choosing and how I was choosing to respond to things. Because how we respond to things uh dominoes into our relationships, into our vocations, into our hobbies even and into our interests. And it takes your joy. You are your own robber of your joy. Yeah, I like that you remind people that you're you're steering the ship, you know. Yeah. And here you are. Um, and for those that aren't watching on YouTube, but rather listening on audio, uh, Jordan is wheelchair bound and mm -hmm. and gradually losing movement and use of limbs. And so now you you can steer your own. Uh, speaking of steering ships, you you can steer your wheelchair, true? Yeah, right now I'm still able to drive my power wheelchair. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if with your SMA, is it, um, do you still have feeling even though you lose use? That's a very common question. I get, I'm, I'm glad you asked me that. Yes. Um, it's not um, similar down in a deeper level to paralysis right um, like i have full feeling sensation um it looks like paralysis but it doesn't feel like it which is very interesting when you think about it and do you use this type type of thing in your comedy i know you're doing some comedy um yeah like what people ask you that's got to be i'm a comic there's got to be some doozies out there that you answer time and time again or you can almost predict oh my gosh here comes so and so they're gonna ask me this again oh yeah i just kind of play off of it or i uh people are like oh uh, like what happened to you and um i tell people oh i got in trouble and i'm i'm at a time out like when i was substitute teaching i would tell kids that because they're so curious i get them mostly from kids oh and sure. um like, oh my God, what happened to his leg? And uh, it's so cute, but like, it's so funny too. And uh, I'll just kind of joke with them and say like, oh, I'm in trouble or I some bad happened in a funny way. Just uh, like little like lighthearted stuff. And they're like, what? Oh my God. I don't know if that's lighthearted, Jordan. <laughs> if I don't know. Lie, it's funny. This is going to happen. No. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just kind of mess with them and... Uh, no, after I mess with them a little bit, I just tell people, 
that I was born this way, and um, I kind of teach them while using humor to break the ice. Of course, it's just a natural icebreaker. Then I kind of teach people that, like, um, you know, sometimes you're just born with things that uh, make you a, look a little different, but you're still a person. And that's my, my whole thing I try to teach people, and uh, this was an emphasis in my TEDx, is that just because I'm disabled and everything, don't treat me differently. Uh, in society, um, I don't know if it's only American society and culture, but we have a huge um, perception of uh, looking at disabled people as these angelic beings that are um, innocent in that they don't know any better and that uh, they're not aware of troubles around them and that they're just living happy and go lucky innocently because they don't have some kind of like self-consciousness or, uh, or a lack or something like that. It's really strange. And that they're looked upon as children. Mm, and uh, right. I talk to people now that like maybe they help out with people that are autistic or intellectually disabled. And uh, this one person says to me, oh, I love working with them. They're like little children. And she's like, oh, I mean, they're not like children. Like she's trying to uh, back out of it. It's so funny. Right. But there's this misconception that disabled people uh, lack understanding of their environment, that they are children, that they are asexual, as in they don't know anything about love and uh, relationships and anything like that. They're just big kids. And uh, so they all treat them with this understanding that, oh, let them be. They're just kids. They don't know any better. And uh, that they're all good. And that's not true. A lot of disabled people can be really big jerks. Oh, right. They can be really big pains in the butt. And they can be manipulative. And they can be, um, uh, they can practice their disability and to take advantage of a situation hmm. and that they can uh this is a big thing is that um we have everyday problems too and uh so i can relate with everyone else's issues there's more than just the disability you look at someone that's disabled and you think oh their biggest problems are all medical far from it that's just uh an, uh, an amendment in the story that's just a footnote mm -hmm. we still struggle every day with mental illness uh depression anxiety um heartbreak hurting other people because we really can we can hurt people i have and i've burned a lot of bridges because of my attitude and all that and when i, I i've been hospitalized many times in my life and developed a lot of ptsd from uh more than one at least two or three two or three for sure near-death experiences wow and i've developed a lot of like suppressed ptsd that i'm acknowledging in therapy and stuff but like people kind of forget that in a way i'm not trying to ins um compare myself to a soldier or anything it's kind of like when a soldier comes home from active duty and uh, all the the confusion on existentialism and uh, what am I living for? And just like you go through these horrible near-death experiences. Like with mine, one in particular, I talk about this in my TEDx talk, is that I suffocated to death. Yeah. That happened more than once, but in different ways. Jeez. Um, Where I would slowly lose my breathing ability in the course of five minutes and um how much that terrorizes your brain because your 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 body is suddenly in critical alert all panic mode and uh you just all of a sudden you just kind of pass out or black out wow. however you want to define it and then like i said in the talk you don't uh, dying is like falling asleep you don't realize it until you wake up until you're, you're conscious again and realize what happened. People are telling you, 
oh, like we found you with your eyes open, but nothing was there. Jeez. And so, and then you go home and everything is fine. Huh. It's like, oh, I died Do a week, over. Ago, but now I'm okay. <laughs> yes. And then it's, it's so strange. It's, it's just a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, it's happened to me multiple times. Dang. Um, for different uh, pulmonary reasons. And you talk about the happened. therapist that walked in. Go yeah. Ahead. At one time, this is four years ago, um, all of a sudden something went wrong with my body. I don't really know what it was. I have to go back and look. But um, I was having some kind of pulmonary and respiratory uh, arrest episode or sorry respiratory distress episode where within five minutes i was losing my ability to breathe i had no means of communication this is during covid so the door had to be shut for all patients because i was a potential covid patient wow. on top of the other problems i was having yeah let's just add and that the, in yeah so and i had the, the ipad they were using to communicate with me died and my whole life was out of reach. So I was completely cut off and alone. And I was just dying right there. And I was gone. Mm. But suddenly, I didn't know this yet. Because I was unconscious. My respiratory therapist walks in. Because she decided to skip her lunch um, for that time. She's like, you know what? I'm going to get Jordan's appointment over with for the day. And she found me. And then I woke up and they told me, I was like, what i wasn't even mourning i was just like are you freaking kidding me right yeah it was so strange it's like i just got revived and i just snapped back into it it's like when you recharge your battery and just reset the whole i got rebooted in that instant <laughs> i didn't even like had time to think so they you shut down and restart you. your system <laughs> yeah so it took me so long to actually have a grieving process and mentally that just messed me up so much in 20 it was one of 2015 2020 2022 so at least three episodes where that really ingrained into me the mm -hmm. severe ptsd that i just never really had time to process when i was there because you just you just go home when you're better and then uh, i cannot even tell you the severe depression subconsciously that was finally coming out where I just wanted to sleep all day because that's what I was used to at right. that point during the recovery process of being at home. I just wanted to go to sleep and not wake up because again, that's what I was kind of used to now. Um, and, and, and in a way, I was thinking like, you know, dying's not that bad. Oh. If I just kind of went to sleep, I'd be fine. You're not done on this realm yet, Jordan. No, mm -hmm. I'm not. And uh, finally, I just broke three of that after a while recovering. And I, I matter now, by the grace of God, right, it really right. was a time of solitude, a time of healing, and a time of not just grieving, but like just my whole body and mind just kind of reset. It took a long time. Because I was like, for a year or so, I was like lashing out at my friends. I was having attitude. All of this thing, all of these things are coming from untreated PTSD. And um, in, a, in a medical sense, because PTSD, we think it's strictly for um, the cognition is that, or the connotation is that, oh, it's strictly military soldiers. Right, yeah, which which is but, very true. Yeah, that needs it's... to be treated. That's a whole other story. Correct, the PTSD saying, can right. happen to anybody. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and any kind of post trauma, and I've I've had it for other reasons too, but I never really addressed all of my trauma, whether it was from my childhood, and or die or the dying episodes. All of that just kind of meshed together that's over 25 years of untreated uh suppressed ptsd that i never really thought about until well late into my 20s so it was like something that kind of blew up all at once mm. and i just finally got uh, god finally got my attention i thought i had it for 
throughout my teens and 20s, but I had to be hit a wall. Right. To yeah. get that's that's that true. Done. That's for so many because the acceptance part and how to go forward and you you know dealing with hurting friends or like you said in your TEDx, I'm no angel. I'm you. That exactly. was so powerful, Jordan. Super mm-hmm. powerful. I I love your TEDx and and the bits of humor that you added in. And I know that you do a lot more speaking. I want people to know they can hire you to speak online, in person, and help other people get to the point where you're at. I do want you to share your one pickup line that you shared in your talk, if you would. (laughs) Yeah, um, (laughs) going to the bar and asking uh, young women if they are wheelchair accessible. (laughs) You even talk about it. and don't forget you get to cut line here with me. <laughs> like... That's true. Yeah, that's uh, my sister years ago I had this really uh, gorgeous best friend. It was like her college best friend, and um, um, my sister said I couldn't ask her out. She said, "Yeah, I had to get in line," and I told her that wheelchair people can skip lines. Uh, that was pretty good. I thought that was clever. That um, is clever. You know you're clever. <laughs> well, nothing you ever happened, merch. unfortunately. You should that. make your uh, merchandise. <laughs> Skip line with me, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. Well, tell people about uh, where they can find your coaching services. Jordan mm-hmm. River Coaching, right? Yeah, Jordan River of Life Coaching and Speaking. Uh, other than that, uh, you can look me up on all the socials. Uh under Jordan Trader or Jordan River, it doesn't matter. And uh, whether it's Facebook, X, Instagram, um, I do a lot of TikToking um, on there. You can follow me on there with my short TikToks. And my website is almost done. Ooh. Um, but that's going to be jordantrader.com. Very nice. This is Other than, so uh, just to keep it simple, just look up Jordan Trader on all the socials. Yes, and, and like I said, it's with a spelled P. different. Yeah, S C H R O E T E R Schrader. Correct. Yep, I'm always available. And um, I think it's just really wonderful. Uh, you've got these different quotes. I was looking at. I focus on what I can and stop focusing on the cannot. So yeah, that was a hard you... total for me to swallow. Yes. If if you want somebody that can come and talk to your group and let them know that how to go forward and, and move forward and ha- find the strength and affirmations and, and acceptance, I think Jordan's the one for you. Um, and especially because you're always going to throw in some comedy in there and oh, you're open yeah. to questions. So you are unique and I am so thrilled that you've been on my show. Can't let you go until I ask you to share a dare or a prank story one you've done or had done to you? All right. So this is kind of with us. Me and two other guys I went to high school with. This is like maybe 14 years ago. Um, we were out and about just bumming around town as teenagers do at night in the summer. And um, we decided to do just some d- ding dong ditching, oh. which doesn't make sense when you're in a power wheelchair. Um, but I wanted to always try it. So my, um, I hid behind this car parked in front of this person's house. Um, I was still sticking out like an idiot. Um, but my t- one of my buddies went up there, rang the doorbell, and we floored it as fast as we could. And uh, I tried to go fast. I was going maybe five and a half miles an hour, which isn't much, but it's like a little jog. And I was like, it, again, it doesn't make sense. So we rang the doorbell. We're running. We're going all set. We, we thought we made it by going to the end of the street around the corner. Well, we were caught anyway because all of a sudden this dude pulls up to us on this bicycle oh. saying, you think that's funny, huh? You guys think that's really funny? And uh, it turned out it was a cop. Um, oh. it, yeah, we accidentally ding dong ditched the cop. And uh, he was okay. He let it go. He was more so upset because we, he just had the little kids put down to bed. Right, right. So he looked at me and everything, and he just let it go. And uh, it was so stupid, but it was fun. Yes, stupid can equal fun. And no harm, you know, but that is hilarious. Not only did you ding-dong ditch in a power wheelchair, 
it was an officer's home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I get so, for trying yeah. to be a rebel once in a while. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, it has been my honor to have you on the show, Jordan Schrader. And remember, we can only be strangers once. And I invite you to stay weird. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you so much for having me. I had a real pleasure just sharing my story. And there's so much more to share. So anyone that wants to uh, book me for your next event or with for your venue, um, it can be your employees. It can be um, your students, which is a big one. I like to do uh, your school, your university, um, whatever you need. Uh, I like to motivate people just to get off their butt and go. That's kind Absolutely. of my thing, like, to get off your butt. <laughs> if if so, you need to get off your butt, give Jordan a call because he will help you do it. Yeah, I motivate all kinds of groups. And I help at weddings as Ooh. well. I, I can MC weddings. I do all kinds of things. But yeah, I'm mostly a motivational speaker. And I go to churches as well. Churches, schools, universities, and uh, corporations and workplaces. Absolutely. You're a fit. You're a fit. All right. So they will look you up on the socials. Thanks again, Jordan. Mm -hmm. You're the Thank best. Thank you very much. Blessings.